students, this is lesson 4.3, Triangle and Parallel Lines. You should be watching this on class 11, 15, and 16 prior to classes either next Monday or Tuesday. Please don't forget to have a parent, teacher, or guardian sign off. Let's do a quick review of our previous class. This says that we have two similar triangles that have a scale factor of 9 to 11. If the perimeter of the smaller triangle is 99 meters, what is the perimeter of the larger triangle? So we have two triangles. One is obviously smaller, and then one is larger. Same shape, but different size. We have a scale factor. of 9 to 11. Well, remember, scale factor is just another way of saying side over side. And we are told that the perimeter of the smaller is 99 meters, and we're being asked to find the perimeter of the larger. Well, we know both scale factor and perimeter are one dimension. And because they have the same dimension, they have the same ratio. So let's make ourselves a ratio here. We know the side over side ratio is the same as the perimeter over perimeter ratio. Why? Because they're both one dimension. Same dimension, same ratio. From here, we're going to do circle plug chug. We have here side. 9 over side 11 equals perimeter 99 over the other perimeter, which we don't know. So for here, of course, it's back down to cross-multiplying. So we end up with 9 times x equals 11 times 99. Now here's a trick. Rather than actually multiply these things out, we're just going to divide and factor. So we divide by 9. 9 goes into 99 11 times. So now what we end up having is 11 squared which is simply 121. So the perimeter of the larger is 121 meters. So last time we introduced the concept of similarity and triangles. And today we're going to continue with the concept of triangles, but we're going to add an additional factor about parallel lines. We'll start with a real simple concept. When we have a triangle that is sliced by a parallel line, then the resulting triangles are similar. What does this exactly look like? Let's say we have a parallel line here. And we're going to slice it, excuse me, a triangle. We're going to slice it with a parallel line. And here, PQR is sliced by a parallel line, J which intersects PQR at S and T. So when you slice by a parallel line, the resulting triangles are themselves similar. Now, originally you saw one triangle, but right now you should be able to visualize two triangles. For example, 
right now we have this inner smaller triangle I like you to trace that and pull it apart bring the letters over and then we have this outer larger triangle And the whole reason why these are similar, remember we talked about similarity shortcuts last class, angle, angle, similarity, side, angle, side, similarity, and side, 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 similarity. Well, in this circumstance, both triangles exactly share this angle up here which is angle Q, so we would call angle Q a reflexive angle. And then because this line is parallel, these angles here and even here, those are corresponding angles. So the triangles are similar by the shortcut angle angle. They have at least two congruent angles, which force these two triangles to be the same shape but a different size and thus similar. So when you work with these, you're going to follow four steps. When you work with a triangle and parallel lines, you're going to trace the sep you're going to trace the triangles, separate the triangles, make a side over side ratio and solve. Say this out loud with me. Trace, separate, side over side, solve. Let's try this problem together and then you'll do two on your own. Step 1. We have a parallel line here, slicing through. I'm going to stretch out the parallel line so it's easy to see. This parallel line is slicing through. And you can see the little arrow feathers. That's going to create two similar triangles. So step one is go, we're going to trace the triangles. Okay, and we're going to label these as we pull them apart. This is, of course, 30, and this is 9x plus 3. That's the green triangle. And then we have this outer larger triangle. We're going to pull this one apart. Trace, separate. Now be very careful on this larger one. Watch very carefully. This side length consists of 10 plus 30. So this larger side length here is 40. Watch out when you pull this apart that you add those up correctly. And then this side length consists of 16 plus that. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go 9x plus 3 plus 16. So now we've traced, we've separated. Now we're going to make a side-to-side -side ratio and solve. So we're going to go like this. Of course, everything boils down to a ratio, uh, proportion. And I'm going to go left to right, side over side. 30 over 40 equals side over side is going to be 9x plus 3 over 
I'm going to do 9x plus 3 plus 16. That's going to be 19, of course. So we have 9x plus 19. Now we're going to cross multiply and solve. So here we have 30 times 9x plus 19 equals 40 times 9x plus 3. I'm going to make this a little bit easier. I can see both sides can be divided by 10. And that's going to change to 3, and that's going to change to 4. So we're going to change here. We have 4 equals 9x plus 19. Equal, no, that's 3 on the outside, excuse me. And then we have 4. We have 9x plus 3. From here we distribute. And, of course, that's going to be 27x plus 57 equals 36x plus And a minus 27x both sides, and then minus 12 both sides. Next line reads, this of course is 9x, and this is 45, so in this case, x equals 5. So x equals 5, so this length right here is going to be 9 times 5 plus 3, which is 48. What I'd like you to do is take the next five minutes and attempt to solve these two problems completely on your own. Restart uh, this video. We'll have a five-minute timer on there. Attempt to do both of these in the next five minutes.
Okay, let's see how you did here. So step one, we want to pull these triangles apart. So here we pull this one apart. And then we have this outer one here. And in this case, we have the green, this is 20, and then the pink is going to be 5 plus 20, so that's 25. And then the green is 3 plus 9x. And then the pink is 3 plus 9x plus 12, so we're going to go 12 plus 3 is 15, so I'm going to get 9x plus 15. Now we make our proportion. And our proportion is this. We're going to go 12 over 25, excuse me, 20 over 25 equals 3 plus 9x over 9x plus 15. Now we cross multiply. And we end up with 20, 9x plus 15 equals 25. 3 plus 9x, and in this case, because I know both 20 and 25 can be divided by 5, I'm going to divide everything by 5, that becomes 5, that becomes 4. Now I'm going to distribute the 4, I'm going to distribute the 3, I mean the 5 to the 3. Next line reads, this is 36x plus 60 equals 15 plus 45x. And we're going to minus 36x. And then this way I'm going to minus 15. That cancels. That cancels. We end up with 9x equals 45. and x equals 5. So for this one on the right, we have again the inner triangle. And then we have this outer triangle. And this one, the long one, that's 36. This is 27. And then over here, we're going to go 27 plus 18 is 45. This is 28. And here we want to find D to E, which is right here. We're going to call that X. Now we make a very simple proportion. I'm going to go X over 28. equals 27 over 45. And, of course, we cross multiply. So we end up with 45x equals 27 times 28. Divide both sides by 45. Notice I didn't multiply because I'd rather factor out. And I know 9 goes in here three times. And 9 goes in there 5 times. So I end up with 3 times 28 over 5. And we're just going to multiply this out. This is close to 3 times 30, which is 90, but minus 6. So this is 84 over 5. And that is your final answer. So the name of the game here is these four steps. Trace, separate, side to side, solve. Now there's two more simple concepts you need to be able to master, and that's this. 
we want to, uh, to find the midpoint of PQ, we're going to call it L. So midpoint of PQ, call it L. So there's L, hatch marks. And the midpoint of QR, we're going to call it M, hatch marks. Now we're going to draw in a segment connecting these two, L and M. And because that connects midpoints, this is called a mid segment. And there's a very, very, very simple, two simple concepts. I'd like you to finger bracket, please, LM. Finger bracket, LM, please. And now I'd like you to finger bracket P to R. And if you notice very carefully, PR two equals two LMs. In other words, LM is half of PR, and PR is twice of LM. Another simple concept is the fact that the mid-segment connects the midpoints of two sides. All the triangles have a total of three of them. A mixed segment, not only is it half, but it's also parallel. It's parallel to the third side and half of the third side. So in this example above, if LM is 3.5, I'd like you to find PR, please. We simply take 3.5, we're going to times by 2, and of course you should have gotten 7. Last thing you need to be able to do is just to deal with parallel lines as a whole. Deal with parallel lines as a whole. And here, when you have parallel lines, the parallel lines cuts transversals on parallel lines, that's the stir stick, cut off pro proportional parts. They cut off proportional parts, which means you can create proportions like so. Now all you have to do is be very careful how you mirror this. For example, let's look at what we're given over here. We're given 20 and then we're given the long segment 36. So if we come over here and then here, not only because we have 20 and 36, we can find this segment, which is 20 from 36, which of course is 16. Now once we have 16, we can make a ratio. We can go 20 over 16. equals the mirrored image on the other side, which is unknown over 36. Now you just cross multiply again. We have 16x equals 20 times 36. And again, instead of multiplying, I'm just going to factor here. Divide both sides by 16. I get x equals, let's see what we can do here. 4 goes into both of these, so 4 goes in here 4 times. And 4 goes in here 5 times. And then again, 4 goes up here 9 times. So my ultimate answer here is going to be 45. I'd like you to take your newly developed skills here, and I'd like you to solve for the unknown for both of these.
Again, I'm going to give you five minutes. If you don't need as much time, just kind of fast forward to the point that you get to the answers. You have five minutes. Go.
Okay, let's see how you did here. In this one, we can match 12 over 16 equals a known over 36. Now we're going to cross multiply and we get 16x equals 12 times 36. Once again, instead of multiplying, I'm just going to divide these out. And we know that 4 goes in here 4 times and 4 goes in here 3 times. And then 4 also goes in here 9 times. So the answer is 3 times 9, which is 27. Over here, now watch very closely. This whole side matches this whole side. So we have to align the sides there. So here we have 4 over the whole side, which is 2x minus 10, equals 3 over the whole side here, which is not 6, but it's 9, because it's 6 plus 9. Now we're going to cross multiply. And we have 4 times 9, which is 36, and 3 times 2x minus 10. Instead of distributing, since 3 goes in the left evenly, I'm going to just divide both sides by 3. End up with 12 equals 2x minus 10. Add 10 both sides. 22 equals 2x, therefore x equals 11. So I put x equals 11 here, I get 2 times 11 which is 22 minus 10, this whole thing's going to be 12. 